In Mark chapter 8, following after what we went over last week, there is a very, very, very interesting story of Jesus' healing of a blind man. Let's catch up. Verse 22, Mark chapter 8, verse 22. Look at the unique character of this healing. And they came to Bethsaida, and some people brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked, Do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he opened his eyes, and his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Right? Wow. Wow. Why? Jesus, you are the creator of the universe. Yes, come in veiled glory, but glory nonetheless. You have the Holy Spirit, the creator of the world, living within you, leading you every step of the way. Why in the world would you perform this healing in a partial fashion? Would you take steps in this man's healing? Whereas in other places, you just speak the word and bring complete healing. Why? Go through all this trouble of spitting in this man's eyes and then having, only to have him see just partially men like trees walking around and then open his eyes fully. Only then open his eyes fully that he may see clearly. He may see you. <laughs> Is that it? Does it have something to do with that? To see you clearly? I submit it does. I believe that we are given this story in exactly the right place. After he has spoken about the hardness of the disciples' heart, how they are already influenced by the leaven of the Pharisees, a focus on temporary things, things that everybody else desires. Instead of being able to see Jesus clearly as the eternal living bread and satisfaction that he is. Instead of trusting him fully, in spite of the persecution that is sure to come. The Apostle Peter, right after this, displays this partial opening of the eyes, seeing men walking like trees so well. Where do we see that? When Peter confesses Jesus as the Christ. When Jesus asks right after this, who do people say I am? They come up with all kinds of answers, but Peter gives the right one. You are the Christ. You are the Christ. And with that wonderful display of faith and revelation, with that, he rebukes Jesus as Jesus speaks of the suffering that he must endure. Jesus is worthy of being trusted in his word whether he speaks of glory or whether he speaks of shame. And Peter takes it upon himself to rebuke Jesus for speaking of the cross. Then Jesus, turning and seeing his disciples, rebuked Peter in front of all of them, and get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. How much more clear can that be? Jesus says you are still only focusing on what your eyes see, the things of man, the leaven of the Pharisees, the political Messiah, what everybody else desires, the deliverance from the Romans, financial freedom, complete healing. And your focus is not on the eternal things, not on the eternal ones. Your eyes, not, eyes are not really on me, Peter. Peter's eyes just half open, being so distracted by temporary attractions. So much like you, and me. Even after we have believed in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, almost always it seems our faith is just a partial faith. Our opening of the eyes is just a partial opening of the eyes, and we don't see Jesus clearly as the full satisfaction that he is, as the one truly worth living for. Listen, and the one truly worth dying for, giving up this life for. Our focus, our eyes are not always there. But here there's good news. Why? Jesus 
performed a full healing. Jesus did not leave the man seeing just halfway men like trees walking. No, he opened his eyes fully, just like he did with the apostle Peter. Yes, there are times that Peter kept on, uh, continued to stumble. I love Peter because of this. His weaknesses are fully on display, like all of the heroes in the Bible. But when everything is said and done, God kept his faith, and his life was crowned with martyrdom. There's a word of hope here for us, who wonder, when persecution comes, will this faith stand? Will I say I side with Jesus against the world? And I believe you will, by the grace of God. I believe you will, by the grace of God. You know what? I believe in God's face, grace so fully that even if you should fail in a moment of weakness, that Jesus' grace in the end will prevail. And your eyes will be fully opened. There are times when the temporary things of this life will distract us, but at the end of the day, it is he who keeps us, not we ourselves. Relying on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, keeping our eyes on him, just as it says in the context of Hebrews chapter 12, we will fight this good fight and own the victory Jesus has already won. Loved ones with that kind of hope, eyes that Jesus has already opened, By his grace, let's open them wide. See Jesus for who he is, the satisfaction that he is, the protection that he is. And from that heavenly point of view, look at your temporary circumstances. And by his grace, loved ones, overcome. This is my word of hope, encouragement, and challenge for you today. Let's pray. How easily, how easily we get distracted by temporary things and temporary tasks. Help us to keep our eyes on you, eyes wide open to you who holds eternity in his loving hands. We celebrate you, King Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.